So from time to time, um, these uh, new phrases emerge. I'm not talking code here, but um, in this case, I'm talking about this birth certificate identity concept. Yeah, let's call it. Seems to, as I say, come from nowhere. I first not started noticing it when people would reference this concept when replying to my videos in, in the, uh, the comment boxes. So what I'm going to do is like dig into what I think this term means <clears throat> And then I'll sort of explain whether I buy into this concept or not. And uh, the short answer is sort of to, to, to an extent. So at its simplest, what I've seen is um, the birth certificate identity thing is that uh, parents um, register their children with the government. And from that point onwards, you've actually created a birth certificate identity. And um, this, according to this idea, this is a bad thing um, because once you've actually registered yourself and created this birth certificate identity, you then give carte blanche to them, you know, the Satanists, the cabal, the kind of funny handshake club, that they then can do whatever they want to do to you. They can um, financially abuse you from t through taxation. They can get you to, all, to do all sorts of harmful things through regulation. And I guess a lot of this goes back to natural law, that according to the principle of natural law, um, if you want to inflict harm on somebody without suffering an adverse karmic comeback on you, the perpetrator of the harm, you actually have to gain the consent of the person that you want to, to harm before you do it. Um, and obviously, you know, in this case, if you uh, register your child's birth, at that point you have consented to the, the Satanist, the, the Funny Handshake Club, doing harming your, your child. So that's kind of um, the first interpretation of it. So do I believe in that? Yeah, I, I believe in that. Yeah, um, can you avoid it? That's a that's probably a better question. I guess uh, is there anything to stop you from not registering the birth of a, of a child? Don't know really. Probably not though. Be, but it might be quite. Yeah, I, I know. I think you could you could probably do it. I think um, to to live permanently outside of their Babylon system, um, you would need to live off grid and you'd need to be self sufficient. And um, also maybe uh, as time goes on, you know, people have got different skills and stuff. You'd need to specialise and, and trade with each other. So that trade, you'd either have to invent a, a, an independent private currency of your own or maybe just barter with, with the people that you want to trade with. So it, it would be possible to avoid it, but, but quite difficult. And as many people have pointed out lots and lots of times, this Babylon system that they've created... Is, is actually quite convenient and in terms of um, material comforts, past tense, it, it kind of, it's, it delivered um, some past comforts uh, over, over, certainly over my lifetime. Another interpretation of this birth certificate identity is this, um, this one, I've heard it through this guy, this YouTuber, big channel, 175,000 followers, so, you know, that's good. It must have defeated Al Gore there, you know, like, you know. Anyway, um, this John St. Julian guy, he's, he says your birth certificate identity is like your job, you know. So um, when you're introduced in a party, like, what do you do? Oh, I'm a, you know, um, I'm a doctor. I'm a whatever. Um, also education. So, uh, again, I noticed this a lot when I was living in Surrey. Um People, the, one of the first questions that they want to know is like, what school did you go to? Uh, where did you go to university? So that they can kind of pigeonhole you. And obviously, like the private schoolies and the Oxbridge lot are the, are the most keen on doing that because ultimately it's, it's kind of wrapped up with ego and, and social status and social one-upmanship games. I guess another thing as well that you see a lot in this kind of Babylon system is... Um, things that you own, things that you own, like status symbols and things. And, you know, you've got a yacht, you've got a nice new um, leasehold BMW. You went on holiday in a villa in Tuscany and whatever. You went to Disneyland or... So all of these things that are wrapped up with your social class and ego and your, your job, your education, 
this John St. Julian guy, he said that this is your birth certificate identity. So quite, actually quite a, a very different meaning to the term literally, you know, that your birth certificate identity is created the moment that your parents um, register your birth. As I say, like I, I noticed a lot of this John St. John Julian, whatever his name is, um, birth certificate identity type of thing in Surrey, where I lived for 15 years before I moved to Finland. And it's all based on ego and social onupmanship that you, you are, you are your job. You are where you went to school. You are which golf club you play at. And people are supposed to be impressed by these external things of like where you went to school, um, what you own, who you know, that, that type of thing. So um, I, I definitely believe that many people self-identify in that way. And I don't think it's a good thing to, to do that. So if you, re if you uh, reject this birth certificate identity as described by this John St. Julian guy, you know, you reject defining yourself according to what you do, where you went to school, things that you own, you know, who people you know, whether you're at the right golf club or not, whether you're a member of the MCC or not. If you reject um, that way of um, defining yourself through this birth certificate identity, what's the alternative? So just some ideas that I kind of scribbled down here. Um, you know, the first one, I suppose, is um, your, your basic personality or character. Now, for me as a Christian, I believe in this. Yeah, of course, when you say the word Trinity, you know, you're thinking about God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But I think there's, there's also other kind of trinities. So, you know, for us, we're all made in the image of God. Um, we consist of, of a body. This is what people, another phrase that people are using a lot at the moment is skin suit. Yeah, for me, I'm not really uh, massively at attached to my skin suit and I'm not kind of majorly freaked out by, by death um, either. You know, I don't really see, you know, when somebody dies, I don't really see much point in doing much to their redundant, now redundant skin suit because that's just what it is it's a skin suit you are you are not your skin suit you know so you've got your body uh, you've also got your soul now for me this is where I'm getting at here soul you could say is like your character your the very very basics of your personality the the, the fundamental foundations of your personality are you loving are you quick to anger um, that the, the very very um, not we're not talking like whether you're interested in painting or cricket what we're talking about here is more deep-seated features of your character so the religious words word for that I guess would be soul um, and then of course the final thing is your spirit which is kind of really 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 interesting and I think your spirit is what inhabits you so does the holy spirit inhabit you or if not then it's basically babylon and satan that's inhabiting you so that's basically um you know all the things that i've just noticed you know like fascination with your job earning more money status symbols social one-upmanship games so yeah so for me if if you reject this uh, birth certificate identity, what can you go with? Well, you can identify according to the, the, the nature of your soul, like who you are, like, are you a funny person or, or not? Are you quick to temper or not? <clears throat> I think the second thing that I would say is um, a recognition that, that we are God's children, like all of us. We, we were made in God's image, um, our father, who art in heaven so god is our father like like literally we have an element of divine within all of us and this is again where i would agree with this john st julian guy is that the, the the kind of cabal the funny handshake club the satanists this is the thing that they fear more than anything else 
a recognition on our part that this is the truth, that there is an element of divine that resides in, in every single one of us. Um, and there's immense power in that. We have, we possess immense power because we are made in God's image. Um, I guess another thing um, that you can think about if you want to reject the birth certificate identity is that uh, is that we're here to do good. We're here to love one another. Um, again, I think I've mentioned this um, in the past. When I got married, my wife had these little um, cards, place cards, I guess. I'm not very good at this type of thing. Put on everybody's table, you know, when they... It was individual as well, and it was like a like a saying, and it said, uh, "Love is all we have, comma love for one another." And I thought, "Wow, that's that's beautiful," and it's true, um, because this this Babylon thing it it's it is rubbish, you know. And I've seen this firsthand, as I've, I've again I've said on many many times before when I was working for this kind of quite prestigious public school, a lot of the parents there. Uh, most of the parents, they were sort of fantastically materialistically rich. They had everything. They had high status jobs. They lived in the right part of town. Um, they sent their kids to the right type of schools. But despite all of this, they seem to be, from what I observed, angry and extremely miserable and devoid of joy and fun. So... Um, yeah, I think we're here to do good, to be joyous, to love other people. And I know this is really difficult, but, you know, I think Jesus, I know we'll never, he was the only perfect human that's been created, but our goal is to try to be as far as we can, to, to be Christ-like. I guess another another thing that you you could use to replace this birth certificate identity kind of thing is to recognise, I suppose it's humility really, that you're, you're here uh, inhabiting this world, experiencing it through the five senses of your skin suit. And, and to recognise that this is just a test. Our souls are being tested. How are you going to react to this kind of the world? Like, again, it's in the Bible, um, Satan tests jesus and we're being tested here again in this world in this skin suit by by jesus again you think about the lord's prayer lead us not into temptation i think that's what this this line uh, in the lord's prayer incidentally for those of you that aren't christians the lord's prayer was dictated to jesus's gospels by jesus himself so, you know, are we going to embrace uh, Babylon, embrace all uh, material trinkets, prestige jobs, ego, status symbols? You know, if you do that, I think you're failing the test. Are you going to, like, do things to fit in that you know that are wrong? Are you going to do acts of evil, sell people down the river, support biomedical fascism, for example? Um just to get your material creature comforts in the short run? Or are you going to use this test opportunity, your, your, this, this life test that we're experiencing, to show that you're a different person, that you, you, you're in love of, with the truth and that you, that you understand that life is about love? You know, turn away, as I, like, as I kind of implied earlier, from Satan's earthly temptations which are mostly ego related aren't they like i guess another phrase the thing that i've been thinking about is many people it says in the bible you know or ten commandments you shouldn't worship false gods well there's two false gods that i can see first of all is the state mummy government sorting everything else for you, out for you and then in the age of kind of social media and ego and it's like worshiping yourself isn't it setting yourself up as your own god i'll put in a link to this um john st julian video i'm not i'm not sure about him at all you can make up your own mind he says some things that strike a chord with me other things less so um this video that i watched it was about um that, that guy that uses all mad and speaks really fast and um yeah rb he's called yeah 
So the one thing that I disagree with this St. Julian guy um, is he, he says, oh, well, RB was, is, is being put here to try, to try to put you back into um, your birth certificate identity by creating a new element of your birth certificate identity. Not your, not just your jobs, not just your interests, not just where you went to school, but are you a truther or or not? Um, I'm not sure if he used the word truther, but he was implying this, that, um, that that's... I suppose it's a divide and rule game again as well, isn't it? That um, you, you, you're putting people into two categories of truther and maybe normie or something like that. So this John St. Julian guy says, well, like, watch out for that because this is you being put back into your birth certificate identity. And I kind of get that. And um, one thing that I would say for certain is that I, I don't hate, as I've said this so many times, I don't hate people that work for the November Hotel Sierra. I don't hate parents who had, who took their kids to the Britney Spears and the Boosters um, concerts, even though their kids were at no risk from the, um, the, the people's pantomime. I don't hate these people. However, um, I don't think it's right to just not talk about these things. So if other people want to call you a truther, no, that I've never, I've never described myself as a truther because I just think it's a bit of a clumsy term, really. It's like a bit cliched. But what I would say is that we were put on this earth to, to do good and to, to love people and also to tell the truth always without exception. And um, if that means having awkward conversations with people, then then when particularly when they ask us questions, then that's what we must do. In that sense, we must all be truthers, always. We must always tell the truth. Um, I also think, you know, going back to the Bible, if you look at the book of Ezekiel, um, Ezekiel was appointed as a watchman by God. So God basically... Uh, told Ezekiel what was coming, which was was bad times. It was another one of these situations where the Jews had turned away from God and God needed to bring them back into line. So Ezekiel's job was to tell the Jews, look, you need to you need to start obeying God's laws again. You need to start turn away from Babylon. You're going down the wrong track. And Ezekiel's role was to warn the people of Israel. And um, he did this. People didn't listen to him. But God said, look, you've got to keep on going as equal, even though um, you know that they won't listen. You still have to speak the truth to them. You still have to warn them. You are obliged as equal by God to try to warn these people. And um, something led me to the book of Ezekiel about like two years ago. I did a video about it. Um, I can't remember what, what the title of the video was, um, but it was about the book of Ezekiel. And so therefore, look, what I'm saying is that we have a moral obligation to warn people. In the book of Ezekiel, God actually is quite clear to Ezekiel that um, if he doesn't warn um, the people of Israel, then God will also hold Ezekiel responsible. He'll also hold him account he will be as guilty as those that were em embracing Babylon. So for me personally, I think um, I would disagree with this St. Julian guy in the sense that we actually have to try to, for want of a better phrase, wake people up. But that shouldn't define who we are. I'm, uh, you know, I, who am I? I'm, I'm Nigel Watson. I'm some bloke from Rochdale and I believe in God. And I, I believe in trying to live out my life, note the word try, um, because I, rec I also recognise that I'm fallen, I'm, I'm deeply flawed and, and I'm fallen, uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I, I try to, well, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Saviour, and let's say that I try as much as I can to live a good life, according good as defined by what Jesus, the ultimate teacher, did when he was here on earth. So, Look, what I'm saying here is that God expects us all, especially at the current time, to be truthers. Not that I'm going to use that word ever again in any of my videos. 
Um, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't dehumanise normies. Um, do I believe that the people that have done harm um, should face some sort of justice? Yeah, I do. Fr through the legal system, not through mod mob rule, not through hatred. Um, justice is not the same as hatred. I think that also needs to be said. I've done videos about that because people either are genuinely confused and they think that the two are the same thing but they're not you know for example people that took money and profited from um the people's pantomime you know and, and caused harm deaths and harm those people should have their assets seized by by the state and those assets should be redistributed to people who have been harmed or to the families of those that were bereaved as a consequence of the of their decision to comply with um these kind of britney spears and the boosters um coercion another thing that i'm i'm not so sure about with this john st julian guy is that he says well we you shouldn't self-identify according to what you do for a living and i kind of get that However, the flip side of it is that um, Jesus was the servant king. He used to wash people's feet, the lowest of the low. So Jesus wasn't afraid to serve. As I, as I say, he was the servant king. So I think what this means is that um, part of love, this is something, again, um, that, that my wife will say, is that um, you can express love in all sorts of ways. You know, you can... You don't necessarily always have to say it. You can make somebody a cup of tea every day in the morning. That is, serving other people is quite often an act of love. So working for others, using your, your talents in the service of others, which is called work, I think is something that, that um, is fundamentally a Christian thing to do. We are all put on this earth, we've got different skills and different talents, and what we're expected to do is is to use our talents in the service of others through working and uh, you know for me that's what I did for 35 years as a teacher and that's what I'm doing now doing this YouTube thing again for free I'm not making any money from this I don't need to make any money from it and I'm not doing it for money um, I'm doing it to try to to help other people so yeah, yeah look what I'm saying here is that um, um, I think, unfortunately, you know, you've got, I've said this a, a moment ago, that you've got people these days, often they worship the state or themselves. And this kind of status mentality has its roots in Marxism. And Marxism is like oppression Olympics, isn't it? You know, the working class are oppressed by the bourgeoisie. You know, the, um, the Skittles people are oppressed by the straight line people. Um, the... Um, you know, you you know what I mean. Like the the black people are oppressed by the white people, and all all of this kind of stuff. And so, therefore, what you need is the state to come in and create social justice by stealing from one group and redistributing to another to make things to make things fair again. You know, so um, yeah. I think it was Murray Rothbard, or it might have been Milton Friedman. I can't remember. Oh no, it was might be Mises actually who said. You know, socialism, it's all about the state treating people in, unequally in order to make them equal. <clears throat> and I fundamentally believe that that's evil. It's pure evil because it encourages uh, sloth, laziness. You know, it's like I'm going to pump out five kids. I'm not going to work because I'm special. I've got, I don't know, I've, I've got something. None of us are perfect. Oh, I've got something wrong with me. I can't work. That's completely wrong it's unchristian we each of us are here to serve one another and ideally that that service should be done in the private sector on a voluntary basis you know in the public sector you're often compelled to consume somebody's services you know the state services like child protection or you know censorship or to keep you safe you know, for me, real work is something that you opt into voluntarily. So you you choose to consume the good or service out of your own free will. And that's not the case with things like censorship or child protection or all of these other misnomers. 
So yeah, so I think that's another thing that I would I would say that I disagree is that like what you do is actually quite important and the Bible's full of references of an expectation on you to work your butt off, to work, re working, working really hard is a good thing because you're service, serving your fellow man and that is a good thing, it's an act of love. Um, rather than the Marxist view, which is you sit on your butt because you, you're a special category of human. Uh, you're special, you're, you know, you're, you're not the same as the rest. And therefore, that's, that specialness entitles you to consume a share of society's output without you having to produce anything of value in return. And that's, that's stealing, basically. So you go back to the Ten Commandments, you shouldn't be stealing. What you should be doing instead is if you want to consume somebody else's stuff, you should be producing something of value and that, and there should be trade taking place between the two of you done on a voluntary basis rather than what we've got at the moment, which is all about coercion and you have to pay your council tax to pay for child protection or whatever it is, some yellow bollards on the street or something or some diversity barriers or something. And if you don't want to, to exchange... You don't want to pay your council tax in return to that stuff. Ultimately, the state will send somebody around to enforce that contract. You know, they'll threaten you with, uh, with, uh, with, um, you know, locking you up somewhere. Some blokes with big sticks will turn turn up at your house, and that's that's not Christian at all. So, um, a bit of a rambly one, but hopefully quite interesting. Um, this birth suit identity thing um i kind of buy into it i kind of don't buy into it um ultimately i think who do i who am i um i'm a one of god's children that's that's who i am and i'm i'm here to try as much as possible to live a good life and to to love one and love to love other human beings and um to develop over my life and acquire wisdom. So by the time I take my last breath, I'm a wiser and better person. Note that I'm not claiming that I'm perfect. I'm far from it than I was before. So that's all I want to say today. So um, God bless.